Hi, this is Lewis Black. You're listening to Alan Handelman, and you better know that you're listening to Alan Handelman. You're not like listening to something else, because if you think you're listening to something else, you're not. You're listening to Alan Handelman. Whatever we deal with strange and unusual topics like the paranormal type of thing, just keep an open mind, hear all sides of the story, no big deal, not saying, oh my God, I'd believe everything and every guest you hear, you go crazy. Anyway, Brad Steiger is with us to sift through all the conspiracies, and he's talking about it in his new book, Conspiracies and Secret Societies, completely updated. I want to talk about the Montauk project i've heard about it i'm from long island not that part of long island but people who live in montauk say nothing's going on but yet it's persistent the details about some ufo connection in montauk well don't feel bad it's very difficult to put together but montauk is this um, semi-deserted base on uh, montauk on long island and uh, the stories that spin around that, we, we've heard so many. Um, uh, Al Bielik was very big about Montauk, and, and he had some Confederates of his who who claimed um, to, well, okay, first of all, it's supposed to be a secret place where young people, the people that uh, the poor lads we see on milk cartons and so forth who disappear, they're taken there. And some of them, they're trained and shipped to Mars or the moon. Or various so there was places. a UFO alien connection. Right, right. And, and then, and we've seen the pictures and don't know quite what to make of it. They also have various uh, uh, highly developed technological mind machines that can connect. And, and your, the images that you see can then be externalized and become real. And this was abandoned when this huge kind of King Kong monster was uh, set loose and still roams the grounds of Montauk. Now, we've seen pictures. We don't know. You know, you can't tell with a picture anymore. Photoshopping. I mean, this, the whole idea of you got to have a picture before I believe it, that doesn't mean anything anymore, does it? So we've seen this, and, and we've heard the claims, and we've talked to the people who allegedly have been there. Uh, the last two summers, you may have seen that strange creatures that uh, usually turn out to be raccoons, bloated with uh, uh, seawater and so forth, but they wash up on beach, on mm-hmm. the beach, and no one claims what they are. They're strange monsters, and then the talk starts to go again. That's what they're doing in Montauk. So these reports are still coming in about Montauk? Oh, yes. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, we just got one a couple of weeks ago. You know, that... Uh, hmm? Well, but, how do, where do they put the, where where are these 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 rooms? Are they under the the sand dunes or something? I mean, yeah, yeah, and and uh, a mutual friend of ours, Lee Spiegel. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, Lee Spiegel. Yeah, cool. yeah, he speaks very well of you, and uh, we've known him for years as well. He uh, interviewed someone who's doing a documentary, and and from what it. Lee says, and what we've seen clips of, it looks very good, but it kind of explores the whole mystery of Montauk, which is still going on, Alan, and and the idea of projecting again to other planets and the warfare that's going on beneath our noses, so to speak, with alien entities and secret army base and so forth. All that spins around Montauk. And then you talk to other people who live there and they say, hey, that's just an old deserted base. It's yeah, that's. What, I have a friend, real good friend who lives there, <laughs> and we've talked about it. He says, no, nah, it's not. And, <laughs> right. and, I mean, how, how could this be happening right under the nose of this? I won't say it's a sleepy area, but it's no. just a bunch of fishermen and yeah. tourists. Well, we, we know a person there, too, a, a writer who's written a number of our books. Uh, and she, of course, is kind of, she's seen things and heard things. And, and um, you know, it's, it's, you can see how that is a conspiracy and how conspiracies grow uh, with a seed, with a germ, with a story, with a sighting, with something you see that you don't understand and you tell it to a friend and then it's the old telegraph game. By the way, you mentioned Ruby Ridge. Uh, Randy Weaver has come back to Iowa. I mean, he's mm. we, see, we see him uh, at various gun shows and so forth, signing copies of his books. Mm-hmm. He's happy to be back in Iowa. 
I remember interviewing him. And speaking of uh, Long Island, as far as conspiracies, that's where I'm from. Right. Uh, Brookhaven. What was going on in Brookhaven? Did it have any connection to Montauk? I find that fascinating. Something about Brookhaven? You recall that? Is that? A, I don't know if you covered that or not, but there was a... Well, specifically what? Just Jeremy. Well, it was apparently, from what I gather, I had the author on it. He has a book out about Brookhaven. They had uh, these uh, these underground rooms or secret rooms where they had aliens who were cooperating. Right. And right, they okay. were there and, and they were doing all kinds of tests. And as a kid, he was brought down there and his dad worked there, had clearance. Right. I just told an incredible story. Anyway, do you have any info? Yeah, yeah. They run parallel, it seems, in terms of the story. But... Uh, um, Brookhaven has not received the uh, <laughs> the attention that Montauk, because I think uh, a number of lecturers have uh, done the circuit speaking about the incredible things at Montauk. And really? They tie, incredible they tie, things? Well, they tie it in with the Philadelphia experiment. Oh, we'll get to that later. This is getting interesting. Okay, so continue where you left off on the on the Brookhaven. So it was like they were just trying to cooperate with... A yeah, couple right. aliens? Right, exactly. Oh, and, and we have this uh, same story, of course, with a number of bases uh, and uh, a claim that this has been going on. Uh, it's, again, the whole subculture, if we may call it that, of uh, conspiracists and conspiracy theorists. It ties in, of course, with uh, the fun <laughs> people be upset, but just hear me out, it ties in with the fundamentalist ministers who say the world is ending, the apocalypse. It ties in with the UFO. It ties in with the Freemasons. It ties in with the New World Order. The new diseases that come out, that's the New World Order. They're making uh, various viruses in their laboratories because they want to eliminate a large share of the population so that the ones that were left will just be mindless slaves to serve the one percent so i mean all these things are tied together linked together and of course people who tell you these things swear that it's absolutely true so our job in writing a book like this is to weigh evaluate talk to this person talk to that person try to get something in between and we we, we do it like a journalist and, and we have editors who if we appear slightly to be favoring one theory over other they jump right on us that's know? right and, and that's the other thing and i can't i can't get this across enough you just have to trust me go on the website read the reviews that are just great but the book is fun to read in the way it's organized from a to z it covers every conspiracy you can conceive of with the latest information organized lots of photos and and just thoroughly researched it's uh what we're talking about, conspiracies and secret societies. People know I don't often uh, elaborate to this extent about a book. but I know, and I, we appreciate it. This is uh, really cool. Anybody out there, whether you're a seasoned conspiracy uh, person or someone who's just interested and kind of curious, this is great because it doesn't tell you what to think. It just gives no. you the facts, and it's really good. All right, we'll take a quick break here. We're going to continue with the strange and unusual it's Brad Steiger, Conspiracies and Secret Societies. This is the Alan Handelman Show. Compelling talk radio. I want to tell you more about the C. Crane Company and that FM transmitter, too. It is uh, one of those things, man, if I was a, when I was a kid, I would have loved to have this. Uh, it's a chance really to essentially have your own radio station. But if you want to hear great audio from your MP3 player, your phone, anything literally you could plug into it, including a microphone if you wanted, this is what they have for just $59.95. It's the FM Transmitter 2. Initially, the FM Transmitter 1 impressed a lot of people, not only because of the price, because of the great quality, the great coverage, because a lot of them, these FM transmitters you've seen, maybe you've even bought them before, they sound like crap. You're not going to listen. And if you're really into music, you know, it couldn't even handle the bass end half of the time. And they put it together. But now the FM transmitter, too, is so much better. 
uh, almost by accident. It is broadcast quality audio. It's an interesting story. See it for yourself. Go to the website or give this. I got a phone number for you to call too, but go to the website, ccradio.com ccradio.com look up fm transmitter 2 read the reviews read about the modifications you can also call 800-522-8863 800-522-8863 and when you call they're going to ask you for a code or how did you hear about it just say allen and by doing that any promotions they're having and discounts they're going to apply they're going to apply it when you say allen the fm transmitter 2 also, the website, ccradio.com, ccradio.com. And even if you're not interested in this product, you've got to see the other stuff. Just call and ask for a free catalog. It's one of those catalogs people are going to want to borrow. Call 800-522-8863, ask for a free catalog, or use the website, or order and try for yourself the FM Transmitter 2 from the Sea Crane Company. Brad Steiger is with us conspiracies and secret societies the second edition is just out 600 pages of conspiracies a to z again uh, he doesn't write the book saying oh you gotta believe this look at this the, no he gives you the investigative reporting that you would trust somebody who uh, gives you the opportunity to make up your own mind it's uh, for analytical thinkers out there to weigh, wow, this is really strange. I'd like to know more to the, well, these people are just crazy. All that stuff is in the book, bradandsherry.com. All right, Brad, good to have you back. Uh, you know, I th did we talk about the Philadelphia experiment? I'm not sure. If you want to just briefly, I, it's, it was it just similar to uh, what uh, happening in Brookhaven and Montauk? No, this is the famous experiment during World War II where the... Navy, and, and the, they throw in the number of scientists who allegedly worked on it. Uh, Einstein was supposed to be proving his unified field theory. And uh, Tesla, the well-known Tesla that's a uh, legend among uh, uh, conspiracy buffs, were working on this project along with the other, uh, a, a number of other uh, military scientists mm -hmm. and professors and so forth. And the idea was to make a ship become invisible oh, that's right. to, to radar. And then, of course, uh, as, as it's been, well, there have been a number of movies based on this, too. Uh, it, it got out of control. And yes, they accomplished it. And it went from uh, the, the Pennsylvania uh, there in Philadelphia to uh, Norfolk, mm -hmm. but what happened was the rays, the vibrations, some people dissolved, some people got stuck in the machine so that maybe just their upper torso was, was hanging right out of the metal in the, the battleship. Uh, so it was, a, it was a successful experiment scientifically, but from the human element, it wreaked havoc. You know, it's interesting, it's kind of good timing, because I don't know if this, if, if this has anything to do with it, but there was an incredible experience that uh, actor Dan Aykroyd had uh, when doing his television show that was kind of an investigative show in the paranormal mm -hmm. about a disappearing car. And he's never told the story on the air, and he, 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 he actually... I, I was happy that he didn't mind talking about it, but yeah. he shared that story. Let me let you listen to this. Nobody has to believe me about the disappearing car. That's fine. Let me, let me you know, I had left all this UFO stuff behind. I, 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 uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I'd hit the wall on it. I was past where John Mack was, where we've got to turn it around and make it part of transforming the planet and helping people and positivizing things. You know, John Mack, the great writer of the book Abduction, the Harvard psychiatrist, I know you know him, killed mysteriously in England there last year. Right. But, um, and, uh, I, you know, I sort of was at the end of it, and I was in Cleveland, Ohio, opening our House of Blues there on Euclid District in the Flats District, and it's been a great success. And I was at publicizing the House of Blues, and the local uh, TV station guy said, would you do a piece on UFOs? I said, well, people, what do you mean? Why, why, why do you want to talk about that? You know, I'm, people still interested in that? You know, like I sort of... 
you know, let, let it kind of lapse. And he said, are you kidding? When we do a UFO story here in Cleveland, because there have been so many sightings, the ratings go up and we beat everybody else at the 1130 slot. You mm-hmm. know? So, okay, fine, all right. So I told a few stories and then uh, saw David socially in L.A. and at, at our House of Blues Foundation room on Sunset Strip there. Uh, and then, you know, we've discussed it. Now, you know, I've got a lot of things going on in my life. I've got the House of Blues. We, I've brought, brought the Patron uh, tequila line into Canada with John Paul DeJoria, my uh, partner. And, uh, you know, we have uh, many, many, many enterprises to occupy our time. But um, I, so I did have this show a few years ago where I inter- interviewed uh, the guy, the expert on Sasquatch, I, I, Linda Moulton Howe, the cattle mutilation lady. And the mm-hmm. day I came to interview Greer and Bassett, the two experts on UFOs, I step outside to have a cigarette. Britney Spears calls me on the phone. She says, I want you to do the SNL that's coming up with me. And I'm, I'm looking one way and going, oh, yeah, sure, that'd be nice. And I turn the, and I see this black crown Vic with two really tall guys, you know, look like the monsters there. I try to look at the plate. It looks almost pixelated or digitized. You know, I look, and I look back a split second to say, sure, uh, that'd be good. I look back again, and that thing is gone. I mean, they did not turn around to a U-turn. I was at 42nd there, and... And uh, Eight Avenue, uh, and uh, they, th- that thing did not turn around, did not go past me. In no way, in that split second that I looked back, in that conversation with her, that 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 car could have conventionally gone any place else than where it did, and it was gone. It vanished. So, uh, ten minutes after that, I get a call. Bob Weiss, our producer, says uh, we you know forget about interviewing anybody. We're, we've been uh, pulled off the air. It's uh, it's over. The office is packed up. They're going to take the 20 and, and analyze and see what to do with it. So that all happened. Wow. Uh, yeah, and uh, Greer, I think, is the real thing. I mean, you know, he has these parties. He goes in the desert and he summons right. these craft. And uh, wouldn't you like to go along on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then James Gilliland up in Washington there, and uh, Phyllis Crystal used to do it at Pine Bush, New York. You know, there are these conduits. If you really, really want to... Uh, you know, want to do a kind of a Burning Man thing and get a thousand people together. I mean, maybe that's the wave. Maybe that's what's coming. That's very interesting. One of the things, the little detail you said, when you looked at that car, you saw someone's uh, face and they gave you the dirtiest look you you could recall, right? Yeah, well, yeah, there were two, yeah. But then I, I turned back, I, you know, it was answer the phone, talk to her, look, just that, you know, having the smoke look there, what's that for? And, of course, police cars, you know, the Bluesmobile. Yeah. I know. I, when I, I look at all Fords, because I want to <laughs> yeah. know whether they're active, whether they're federal, state, municipal, whether it's a Bluesmobile used, where it came, you know. I'm a freak like that, so I'll crown Vic, you know. And I look back, uh, and, uh, you know, and there it was, and I look to turn again to speak to her, just talk about the show, and take another drag of the cigarette, turn in a split second, that thing was... Not there anymore without the guys, no, nothing. So nobody has to believe that story. But again, at 54 years old, you know, I, I can, I can say that I, I'm, I'm, you know, relatively sane. And then 10 minutes later to have the show yank. Now, explanation, possible and plausible. They just didn't want a talk show ultimately. They wanted to change their strategy and just do these movies, which they do superbly, and these, this television drama. Their uh, sci-fi is a great, great uh, carrier of the, of the of the torch where we study other worlds and other dimensions, right. other realms, and the, the parallel and the possible. And, and it's not their fault, and, you know. And so, um, you know, maybe that's all that happened. It was all a coincidence. But just, just you know, that day, those two UFO guys who will talk about weird things. Bud Hopkins talks about strange things since he's been starting this research. Strange things happening to him. Right. So maybe that was just sort of a flash of. You know, now I've gotten my toe in this. You, you know, you want to you want to play around here? Well, here's here's the kind of things that can happen. Now, I haven't had anything happen since. The Patron Tequila is selling beautifully in Canada. House of Blues is the third largest concert business in the world. Uh, we have the largest uh, concert business in Canada. I uh, am raising a family and having a great time, and I'm not looking to get into trouble here. But I'm you know I'm just laying out uh, what I think is common now and well well known in the lore. Wow, you know. Dan Aykroyd sounded believable. How about your comments, Brad Steiger? As he said, it's well, well known in the lore. And those of us who have gone seriously into UFO research have had those kind of experiences. And it's um, Nick Redfern, who you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. He's done a new book on the Three Men in Black, which, uh, bless his heart, he dedicated to me. Absolutely. We have him scheduled, I think, in a few weeks, but continue. Go ahead. Yeah. 
So he, uh, I've recounted several experiences from my early days when you when you start really getting your foot wet, as Aykroyd said. That's that's when things start to happen. But as I I told Nick for the book, interestingly, um, well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, and then when Sherry and I got together. Um, when I was beginning and the books were coming out, mm -hmm. I was still teaching in college. And the, whatever you want to call them, cosmic pranksters, didn't as much afflict me as they did friends. And one by one, my academic friends cut off all relationship with me, except the professional one, maybe, and we passed each other in the halls of the recorded classroom because they were the ones that got the annoying calls. They were the ones who got bothered. They were the ones that got, you know, the phone that would ring and weird voices and so forth. And they all eventually attributed this because of their friendship with me. And I recounted numerous things, and we need not go into them because, again, like Aykroyd said, you know, it does sound like you're you're uh, you're getting a little loopy. But we had a number when when Sherry and I got together and decided we were going to go back into UFO research. And I said, you know, it's it can happen. We have to be prepared. And one of the most amazing, I think, we we uh, we lectured. When we were in Phoenix, we used to have, I may have mentioned this before, our paranoia nights where researchers in the area, if there was a scientist we knew coming through, if there was someone from NASA coming through or whatever, we were invited. And, and it was just a, a very informal backyard thing, but it kind of grew and grew. And we then, at uh, one time, uh, someone said probably more to us than than he should have. And we were lecturing in New Mexico, and a new facility, they bragged about their state-of-the-art recording equipment, and they were going to sell a tape of our lectures uh, after the event. And we said, fine, that will help, because we did this for our benefit, it was mm -hmm. a benefit uh, to benefit uh, uh, a worthy society. And they, we saw them checking several times, giving the high sign. And this was, they had fabulous state-of-the-art equipment. And then Sherry got into this area and started kind of disclosing something maybe. And I kind of gave her the high sign and she got it. And then she kind of steered away, but she had to get into it a little bit to gracefully. She just couldn't just stop talking. And even though they checked several times, the tape was fine, the tape was fine. When we came, they came to sell the tape after our lecture, it was completely blank. Oh, God. Even though they checked it several yeah. times, yeah. the guy had no explanation. It was recording brand new equipment, and the needles were all going, the needles were all going, everything was fine. So that type of thing happens. Or you're going to, you arrive cold. Well, shall we stay here? And you go to the desk and find that someone has already checked you in, even though you just picked oh. the hotel at random when you're driving late at night. And you know, Brad, I, I think I've told you the story. I don't have the audio readily available from uh, ghost hunter Joshua P. Warren. Oh, yes. Who does a lot of uh, specials right. on the Discovery and right. Animal Planet and History Channel. Just amazing. Another but, good friend. But, well, you probably know this story, but it goes hand in hand with what happened to Dan Aykroyd. And for the regular listeners, they've probably heard it a million times because I referred to it. But he was doing a, uh, a, a, a seance, from what I understand. They call it a seance to reach an extraterrestrial spirit of some sort. And it was uh, very likely there was one there. That's why they took the HD chant, the, the cameras and equipment and the expense. And this was when HD uh, was very, very expensive. So they did this seance and they had this amazing contact where everything was caught in vivid HD of contacting some kind of alien. It was communicating. It was there. It was blowing everybody's mind. Producers, everyone was freaking out. The Discovery Channel, 
And at the same time, they just thought, my God, this is going to be huge. And, and then all of a sudden, I'm not sure how much time went by, they get notified, sorry, show's uh, been canceled and uh, you don't have access to this uh, video and it's uh, unavailable, show's over, we're not going to air it. And nobody could get a copy of it. Nobody, right. even the people who worked there uh, were fired. It was just over. So it makes you wonder something's yes, going uh, on. As it turns out with a lot of writers, you know, a good many of my friends are police officers or former police officers or mercenaries or whatever. Uh, I think there's that link between that kind of individual and the writer. You know, they like to tell their stories. And, and I used to do a lot of magazine writing and, and utilize them that way. Anyway, a friend of mine who got involved with me in UFO research, he had been in special forces, and he was also a former policeman, and he had contacts still in the, in the force, in law enforcement agency. And while we were deep in research, he used to go with me on a lot of investigations. A strange car pulled up in front of his place of business. He said the unusual, an extremely tall, extremely thin person got out, tried to interview him, and it was just babble. And my friend got impatient and said, why don't you leave? Now, when he left, he said the car looked like it was a makeup of maybe like seven or eight different models. Mm, and he took, he, he had never seen anything like that. And he yeah. was a car buff, and he couldn't describe it. And then he did take down the license, and he phoned in a friend of his in the uh, Bureau of Vehicles, and uh, no such license had been issued anywhere because he was able to do a nationwide. Now, of course, one could say then special, uh, you know, secret black agency or so forth. But those are the things that, that happen when you get deep in this field, and, and you do wonder, you know, are these representatives of a human agency, or are they some someone else? Yeah. from another dimension, you yeah. know, another world. It, it's strange. It happens. And, and it kind of ended up to a theory which you know we've discussed uh, in some of my other books of just creating this alternate reality, creating this kind of mm -hmm. um, world of imagination that is so powerful that it becomes, uh, it develops a life of itself, by itself, of its yeah. own. Yeah, interesting. And you see the origin of the whole idea of men in black there are some stories that make you think about men in black and these oh, uh, strange looking. I notice what, because I know kind of what, I, if you see something, I said, well, that's not a Chrysler. That's not a Ford. That, right, what is right. that? That is, what, it, that would just, I mean, yeah, that would be a curiosity. All right, let's take a break. It's Brad Steiger, the latest book, Conspiracies and Secret Societies, the all new second edition just out. His website, Brad and Sherry. Dot com brad and sherry dot com sherry s h e r r y stay tuned for more of the alan handelman show compelling talk radio you heard it pays to donate your car for a nice tax write off please choose your charity well since 1983 cancer fund of america has helped cancer patients and their families deal with the devastation that is the big c Help us fund this vital work, and Cancer Fund will make donating your car extra easy with the fastest free pickup. Then you write it off. Operators are standing by to take your call this very minute at 800-676-2180. Donate boats, trailers, and all vehicles, running or not. Cancer Fund handles DMV the works. Call now and donate that car. Cancer Fund gets it out of your hair pronto. Call 800-676-2180. That's 800-676-2180. Call now. 800-676-2180. Thank you. <laughs> 